Hello there and welcome to my Arty Corner here on YouTube. My name's Angela, Angela Porter and amongst other things I'm an artist and the aim of my YouTube channel is to just help and encourage people to draw for the purpose of just enjoyment and relaxation and it's being creative is actually really good for you and as humans we're all very creative. I was a teacher science teacher for 28 years and in that time I did teach art for a couple of years as well and a lot of my lessons involved creativity and drawing and things and I didn't even realise that at the time so I can be incredibly dense but I'm best known for my adult colouring books but I have a love of pattern and abstract and stylized and whimsical and cute so I'd just like to say thank you for joining me and if you've subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't yet subscribed, please consider doing so. It's free. It's like following on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. It doesn't cost you anything. It just says that you're enjoying what you see. And it lets, it's sort of like it lets YouTube know that um, people are liking it and shares it with other people who might like it as well. So. The more people I can help, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Not that I'm saying I'm correct on everything. You just get my point of view, my way of doing things, and we just see where it goes from there. So, so I'm just going to say thank you very much for that. I'm blathering. I'm sorry. My head's not quite right today. Um, it really wasn't right yesterday, but today I'm, I'm full of fuzz. Yesterday, I don't know what my head was full of, but it wasn't fuzz. It wasn't... I don't know what it was. So what you can see in front of you here, let's get on to this, are um, some pieces of paper. And these are all Claire Fontaine paint-on uh, mixed media paper that I've cut to squares six centimetres by six centimetres and rectangles that are ten and a half by six and a half centimetres. I'll try to remember to look these up in inches and add them to the description. I'm British. We use we actually do use met metric and inches, but I'm happy with with metric. Always have been. Um, but I've bought these for the. Oh, I've cut these up for the um, the idea I showed a couple of videos ago for little random acts of kindness, leaving little drawings and messages in places for people to find as ways of saying thank you. So the colours. This is natural, which is you know, sort of like a pale brownie colour. I really like that one. This is grey green. And I think this is, um, it, it's absolutely lovely. I really like that one. It's akin to the um, toned paper that I use from um, Fabriano. So it's not a dissimilar, I think it's a paler colour. And this one is new from the um, Claire Fontaine, which is denim. And I really like this. And in my stash somewhere, I have got a grey paint on. I have the white and I've also got the black. So I'm blessed with many colours in this paper. But I think I'm going to use the green one today. Um, we'll see where we go. And my first job is to... I'm going to draw a square within the square. And I'm going to do a variation of well. Because well is... One of my favourite patterns of all time. It reminds me when it's done um, reflected, rotated of, of um, patterns you see in early Celtic art and Latene culture art, um, which I have a particular love of. So, you know, I live in one of the Celtic nations. I've lived here most of my life, all by the first five years, five and a bit years. And so, you know, you get to see a lot of Celtic style art here. Um, but there. So, I've started by putting um, one of my favourite kinds of starting points well. Um, roughly in the middle, it's not. I could have done with, you know, the middle's most probably over here somewhere, and I've put it up there. And it doesn't make a blind bit of difference. Um, it's hand drawn, it doesn't have to be perfect. And so I like to put like a black pearl and then put an aura around it so it looks like an egg or a droplet or an eye even. So 
To draw well, I'm going to draw number sixes that head off towards a corner. So you can see this creates a number six. I'm going to turn my tile for this part to show you that I am drawing exactly the same each time. So by turning your tile round, you know you've got to make the same kind of stroke and you don't get lost. So I have been known in the past to draw this, keeping the paper still, and I end up in a right pickle. So what I want to do next is I want to imagine I'm going to connect these two. Is it those two? Yeah. I want to connect here. Is it that way? I've got myself confused. Yeah, I want to, yeah, I want to start from here and imagine I'm connecting up to here. So I'm going to go about to here. So if I carried on this line, it would come here. And I'm going to do that with each of these. So I'm going to imagine I'm joining these together. So I want to aim for this point there. So I've just put a little dot there to help me. It's not critical if I miss it, other than the dots will be visible. So if I join this to this and back, it's about there I want to go, so there. And then again here to here, and it'll be about there, I think, or near as. Now this is an interesting variation on its own, and I like this as it is. Um, in fact, if I was going to do this one, I'd actually wouldn't worry about trying to get it to join to the point. I'd just create um, an arc further down and have a nice little pointy shape there. And that is a nice variation. But here, what I want to do here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to join it up to that point as if we're completing this shape. It looks almost like a weird fish. And again here... And I'm going to join this up here and again here and we're going to join it that way towards the corner. Missed a bit there so we'll just have a slightly thicker line there. And then this one and it goes along the line. So I've got interlocking weird fish, kind of, not really. Um, but uh, it does create this woven kind of pattern going on here. Now, I want to bring that out a little bit um, in some ways. And I think the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to swap to a finer pen. So I've got a confession to make. This is the second time I've drawn this today. Earlier on, in my infinite wisdom, I decided that I would add some metallic paint. And it's never a good idea for me to be let loose with metallic paint unless I'm filling in very big areas and keeping it within the area is important. Isn't important. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a triangle in the pointier sections. So I'm just ordering these, taking them to a point and coming back. You can see I've taken it a bit further than this line. So I could actually have, actually, that could be a good idea. It's, I didn't do this earlier. I'll come back to that. Some of you may have guessed what I'm going to do. Like so. And then the last one. I'm glad I used a finer pen here. I didn't do that in my earlier one. And I'm just going to go around and add some weight to the end of these lines. In fact, to all of them, I think, where they join. It just, I don't know why I like it, but I do. It's something I've done for a very long time in my art, long before I discovered Zentangle. And um, 
it just feels that you're connecting lines with little blobs of something like um oh what do you call it what's the name of the stuff solder like in lead windows so here i'm going to draw this line but what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw it here and then here too and then this one is going to go back like this but I've got no way of connecting these two so other than I've got this here and I so I can draw that border in like that I'll, I will do this time and time again for you so here I'm going to draw this line I'm going to draw it to the other side and then I'm just going to aura these like so and then I'm going to connect this line here and here a little bit there made a bit of a mess there but it'll be fine so you can see this like this is going underneath now if I thought about this in advance I could have tried to weave these up and over you know over that but it's not going to happen here and I'd need to use a pencil to do that so let me just draw this one in this is the easier way of doing it let's draw this in first and then we can complete these two adding that bit of weight like so and then the last one let's draw this one in I actually quite like that it's going out they are weaving under one another though maybe not the best of ideas in hindsight but you know you've got to try these things from time to time to see what happens it actually works quite nicely in its way but I can always change this because I want to fill these sections in. But that's, that's an option. It is an option. It's something you can do. It is. Very much so. So what I'm going to do here is I want to fill these sections up with something. And I think what I'm going to use now I've done this is I'm going to change what I'm doing here I wanted to see I'm, I'm a fan of perks in this so perhaps I can still put I can still do that the fact that these ones actually match the size of that border is neither here nor there is it you know, it is what it is and we'll work with it regardless so these aren't quite nestled behind well they are actually kind of nestled behind each other and squashed in by all means leave that border in there if you wish I've decided to disguise it here because um, I would like if I was going to use it I'd want it weaving up and over so I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. Normally I'd want to work at the bottom and work my way up. But today, because we're disguising this here, hopefully we're disguising this. By the time I've added some colour to it, I'm sure we will have. So... I'm drawing these slightly different to the other one now because I have got them tucked one in behind each other, which wasn't my plan. There we go. So yesterday, I just could not find any kind of inspiration for anything to do in the form of a video whatsoever. I was completely lacking in it. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I knew that I wanted to create some coloured paper for these 
random acts of kindness things that I'm doing, which is this is an example of. And the envelopes I ordered arrived yesterday and I will show them towards the end of the video because I think you might be interested in seeing them because it's certainly with one of them there's an opportunity for even more decoration to go on. I'm a glutton for punishments. Thing is, I don't need to make a huge number of them. I just need to have enough. And I was sat there colouring paper with distress inks, which is something I really enjoy doing. And I've now got a, a fairly sizable stash of papers, pieces of paper, the right size. So with these plain coloured ones as well, I've got plenty of options here as to what to do or to use. And um, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just, as well as drifting to my right, I'm um, just rounding where these sections join each other just to give a more finished feeling to them. At the moment, they just look a bit raggedy. So, I was doing this and suddenly I thought, oh, I haven't done any stop motion for a long time. That could be fun with a small small piece of paper, small drawing, you know, something quite simple. I think I did a variation. No, I didn't. There was part of it was a variation of well, but not everything. So you can see I'm just going in before I put the last lot of perks in. <laughs> And just rounding corners and filling little gaps in and tidying things up as I talk to you. Um, so that's exactly what I did. So thank you very much for everybody who said they enjoyed it. Um, because I, I just thought this is just not what I would normally do. But it just was something that I thought would be fun. And it took me as long to make as an actual video would. But a lot less time to process and upload. And uh, finding the music and downloading it, making sure I got the copyright for it um, added correctly to the description. It took longer, most probably, than processing and uploading. But anyway, so I did that and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And apart from the fact that, well, I know I need to do, sort the lighting out for that. I probably will need to sort lighting out for my videos at some point because we're heading towards winter and um, winter is never a good time for light so I'm, I'm making a bit of a pig's ear here with some of these little sections but I think they'll be okay because you know everything that you do if it looks messy while you while you haven't finished it then once you've get on and finish these things they tend to have a habit of sorting themselves out so um so thank you for that and for those who enjoyed it I promise not to inflict them on you too often and if I do it'll be sort of like a bonus video a day or you know in a day or a, in a day when perhaps I haven't got time to do another video or, or like yesterday when I've just lost my mojo okay so this is picking up that lovely sort of like spiky spirally pattern which I really like but I want to do something in these triangular spaces. I could do paradox which I didn't actually do because I on my original version which I'll show you I actually put the triangular versions of well in but part of me is thinking that perhaps something a bit different here might be nice. Paradox would be quite nice but I'm actually thinking more along the lines of Betweed because Betweed is another one of my favourite filling patterns. And as long as I always start on the same side and I'm going to start on the left of each of these sections with the point towards the top, then Betweed will always work out and they'll all they'll be the same. And I love the way that you get the darkness down the centre so it looks like this is caving inwards as it were. So quite different to the perks which will look like they're sticking upwards. And this is going to take me a little while to get my... there we go. Because I will 
find a position where I can draw these comfortably zigzagging back and forth. And at the base there, I'm not going to fill it in with the tweeds, but I'm just going to fill it in with tiny little perks. Just something a little bit different. So again, I'm going to start off on the left. I'm going to get my first bent line in. Strictly speaking, if you can start at the bottom and draw it that way, you might find it easier. But I'm quite comfortable moving my pen in both directions. And I haven't weighted these little points, which helps with that density of ink. Just a little bit. And I'm putting these quite close together. That was a bit too much there. It'll be all right. Okay, there we go. It's, that's my happy place for Betweed. So I'll start that off by pointing it at the top to get the right side. And then I'm going to point it sort of like to my left. Okay, so we'll start with the one from the left. I'll point it that way and then I'm going to find it quite easy with a slight adjustment to move these back and forth as I want to do them. This pen is nearly at the end of its days, which happens so often with me, long before they run out of ink. I've wrecked the nibs. Shame we can't replace the nibs. And I can't find my Copic multi-liners where you can replace the nibs. I've put them somewhere. They'll turn up one day. I just don't quite know where I've put them. I'll get another one in and then I'm going to fill the base with perks actually ties this section in quite nicely to the other ones in a way. So it is nice to use something similar. So again the last section I'm just going to do that way and then I can start working on the zigzagginess back and forth of the Between, I like to start where they overlap so I can but it doesn't matter which way round you do it start from the corner or not it all works out the same in the end it's just personal preference So that one is quite different in look from my original one. This one is awful because the gold, the metallic paints went everywhere and it went over the black lines and there's no coming back from that. And when I was trying to clean them up, I spread it even further and so on. The one thing I haven't done here is on that one, I did use a green um, pen to actually um, fill these sections in. What I'm going to do in these sections is I'm going to add another aura, another aura, and then this bit I'm going to fill in. So double aura. So one there. And there. And I quite like that black on the corner. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to reflect that triangle shape out into the outer border so that we get something here that is a little bit different to what I would normally do. 
get this interesting kind of shape going on. This one is a littler one because that space was smaller and that's fine. So that's quite nice and what I'm going to do on these is I'm going to draw a circle that goes almost to the edge like so and I think I could let me have a look I'm going to we can or around so I'm going down along and round down along around the corner <laughs> back up. I think perhaps I'll do it in halves this way. This pen really needs to go in the bin soon. I will use them for as long as I possibly can. Very very complex looking yet made from fairly simple um, patterns. So what I'm going to do here is I have got, I've got green and I've got a charcoal grey that I'm going to use. This is iron green and I'm going to use this to add shadow and colour to, this, to these perks to help them stand out. Now the highlights I'm likely to put in with white charcoal, but not until everything is coloured and dried. But even just by adding these lines of you know shadowiness here on the edges, we're already beginning to excuse me while you see my hand go across. I do apologise, ish. Um, Even just by adding these lines, you can begin to see the dimension appear. So I'm using a water brush just to activate the ink tents and to start to create a gradient here because I would like a bit more colour, I think, right up to the centre, like so. And that is already doing the work for me. I could have used graphite because it does work on coloured paper, but I much prefer colour on colour if, if, if you understand. So feel free to use whatever you like because it's your work. I'm choosing to use tools that I particularly like to work with or media I like to work with. But it doesn't mean you have to or you have to go out and buy it. If you're happy with what you've got, you're comfortable with what you usually use, do that. The ideas are the same where you put the shadow and the highlights. It's quite a bit there, that green, which didn't blend out. This is lovely because it looks almost metallic while it's wet. But of course, if I want to keep that wet look or that, that shiny look, then I can use um, a gel medium, a gloss gel medium or a varnish of some kind. A gloss Mod Podge, I suppose, would work. Oh, I don't have Mod, Mod Podge. And here's the last one. This paper actually works really nicely with um, water. It's mixed, it's the mixed media, so it's designed to work well with. Um, plenty of water, wet wet media, um, all sorts, and it's really quite robust. But the downside is it does have quite a tuft to it, which means that we end up with um, um, pens wearing out quite a lot. So I could have drawn on this with um, one of my fountain pens, but I didn't. Now here I am going to put in these sections I'm going to put this, I'm going to use the same green, 
but I'm going to put it in the middle and I'm creating like a, a diamond, a diamond, a triangle where it's wider at the bottom and narrower towards the point because I want a wider shadow or a you know, wider area at the bottom here of shadow. Because where these lines come together is where I would envisage most of the shadow to be. So I'm going to very carefully start to pull some of this colour out towards the edges, hopefully fading away to no colour. Activating it, but pushing it back and then just bringing some of that colour down so that we have that darkest area in the centre. And I can just add, just move a little bit more if I need to, just to blend that through. So it all looks a bit dark because the water will darken the paper as well. And I'm picking up some of the um, pigment from the pen. Ideally, you need to leave this for a while, this kind of paper for a while or the pen for a while to make sure it dries fully. But, you know, I could have attacked it with a heat tool if I thought, but I don't always think, as you know, I get engrossed in what I'm doing. But it becomes what it is and you work with it in the way that it is and accept it for what it ends up like because that is how it's meant to be so, <laughs> on this day this is what it is meant to be like so I've got some colour there let's just dark, activate all of the dark, darker bits towards the middle and then I can do the same on the other side and just pull little bits of the colour out and spread them down so we get some colour all the way along those parts. And do the same here. There is something just so pleasing about working on coloured paper. It's I don't mind drawing on white, but I just so much prefer colour these days. I really do. I think it brings a, a, a tone or a character to your work before you've even started. Right, I did get this charcoal grey out because I'm going to use that to put the shadows on these borders here to help to bring dimension out in those as well and highlight. So I am going around all these places where they overlap and putting some down knowing that if I need to add more I always can go back and add more. That isn't a problem. It's always better to add less And event, you know, and add more then later on if that's what you need, because um, especially when something dries, like ink tents does, um, it dries permanent. But again, I'm going to bring highlights out once I've added all of this, and it's all nice and dry. With um. I say I'm going to use some white charcoal and I will, but I'll most probably use white gel pen or white ink on the top. I'm trying to smooth it. I'm not the world's best watercolorist. And I'm, I'm, you know, honest about that. It's not my favourite technique. But when I'm working, this is just monochrome. So it's basically, so it's there just to add that shadow and to leave the highlights. Then I'm happier doing this than I would be working with watercolour. And if it's a bit patchy because of the, the graininess of the paper or the quality of the paper, then it is what it is. It's a function of the media mediums, media, I'm using. I 
this water brush isn't flooding water out. It's got quite a dry point or not dry, dry bristles, but they're, they're, they're damp, but they're not flooded with water. Though they did need a little refresh there, needed a little bit more water to come down. So that's beginning to bring that out. And I think I would want some shadow at the tip here because I think they are bending away and I think that the highlight is up here somewhere. So I'm just going to go and add some of the charcoal grey in the corner. I didn't want to use the green again because it would all look the same. I don't want that. Let me just clean that off because I want to blend this, but I don't want it to go too far. I want to keep some areas here that are very much for the highlight, as it were. And even without the white chalk or white ink or whatever I choose to add here, there would still be these lighter areas, but I do want to bring that out. And that makes more sense now to me that I've done this. Yeah, that, that's, got that, that's got a better feeling of things being um, in shadow. So here, I think I might put the shadows in a different place on these because I'm going to put them, to begin with, next to the, the dot on the point and then above the point on the opposite side. So a tiny bit on that one. And again, I can always add shadows elsewhere if I want them elsewhere. Part of me is thinking, now, Angela, you should have done these ones in green. Yeah, probably. But let's have a look and see what happens. Perhaps this one I'll make quite dark all the way along. And then the one on the top. Perhaps not quite so dark. The ones on either side I'm just blending out as far as the colour wants to go. This one here I want to fill really with colour. This one not quite so much. As if there's bits just appearing in the light perhaps towards the end. Again, I can always play around with this and add more later on if I feel I need to. I may feel I don't. Every now and again I'm just cleaning the brush off so I've got that. So How's that looking? I'm looking at the screen because I can see the illusions better on the screen. Now, something I want to do is, this is a piece of the same paper, it's a bit of scrap from the offcuts. This is white in ink tents, and I want to have a look at how this activates with water and how opaque it dries. Because this could be a solution for me going forward in my highlights and so on. And it's actually quite, does it dry, opaque? That's the question. It'll be fine where it's quite thick still, but I can ease it out. I think that'll be... Does that show up as a highlight? I think it does. So let me try this for highlights. I do want to sharpen it though, because I want a sharper point. 
than I had. So let me have a look and see how this works. The worst that happens is I come back with the white charcoal. So I do want to blend this out, but I want to make it permanent at the same time. So compared to the others, how's that looking? I'm not entirely convinced actually. So let me have a look and see what I can do here. It may need layers, so I'll withhold judgment. When I put it down just as white, it stands out. But um, I do want to try to get it to remain in place. So perhaps I'm... Perhaps not a mess with the middle part where I want it to be bright, bright. But just use water right on the edge just to fade the edge a little bit, blend it out. That actually works. There we are, I've discovered something new today. Discovered there is a use for a white pencil. Albeit an intense one. And actually this is the first one I did and it's dried pretty good. Let's go over the top. So that's given me quite a lot of nice brightness there. So I'm going to do the same on these corner bits where I'm going to add highlights and I'm going to do them all in one go here because I can. So I've got all of those done. I'm going to put white in the middle of each of these because I think that would be really rather lovely. It really is opaque, this white. I'm going to go round the outside of this as well. And pop that there. I've got white to go in this section. Now, this is the bit that I've got to pay attention to because my eyes can go a bit funny when I'm looking at ones like this, but there and there, there and there and I'm going to put some highlight around the corners as well. Like so. And then I'm just going to use a damp brush just on the edge of the white just to moisten it and move that edge that little bit just to soften and blend out. I don't know how much of a difference this makes. I think it makes a little bit. Just trying to do the edge, not the whole area of white. So that would be a bit silly. So I've seen how that affects it. A degree. It may be subtle what I'm doing, but I think it will work. And then I've got these tiny little perky things down there. Now, I have got here, have a look, I've got a souffle pen. So I'm going to see if I can get that working. I've got a brand new one out because this one is just about run out. But I don't want to throw it out if I can still make use of it. So I'm going to pop dots of white in these in the souffle. Because I'm not going to trust myself to do this with a pencil. So I've got all of those done. In fact, I think I might do the ones in the, in the edge as well. 
Souffle pens are fantastic, they are opaque. And they also dry with a raised bump. Um, not so much on paper because they tend to flatten, but on other surfaces, non-porous surfaces, they really, really do. So I've got all of that done. Now I'm just looking to see if there's anywhere that I want to get some white. I did notice somewhere where I'd overspilled black into an area and it wasn't looking very nice there. So I'm going to get back there, hopefully, with some white. I think I've just knocked the um, souffle. That would be fine. I don't want... I might just pop some little hints of white highlights in the edges here. Does that need it? I think it does. Yeah, I think so. I think that helps the betweed to come out. And even though the black lines are being muted because my point isn't as tiny as the spaces between the lines, I'm quite happy with that. Because again, it, it's sort of like it makes it feel like there's a glow going on or reflected, you know, as the light is reflected, it, it gives a glow. Oh! And down the centre of these, isn't it? Because I'm using a pencil, I can actually do this in a better way than I would generally. Because they do need some white. And I will come back with my water brush and just blend the edges a little bit. So we just haven't, you know, the edges aren't as harsh and stark here. Just to soften that highlight a bit. Perhaps not as opaque as I'd like, but then the white charcoal when you blend it out tends not to be that opaque as well. So my last little bit of work with my water brush just to soften these edges a little bit, blend them in a little bit, but making sure that I don't wash all of them out, but here I certainly can. I think I've learnt something new today. So that's always a bonus when you learn something new about your materials or about a technique you can use so and this one will be the last one then So all that remains for me to do with this is to put my initials on it somewhere and um, I'm not going to put a shadow, oh gosh look at that, go over that. So I can touch these lines up if I need to anywhere. I'm not going to on the betweeds because I'm going to leave them as they are because my I'm I know that if I start to tidy things up or to go over lines, that's when things tend to go wrong for me, big time. Another reason that I didn't show you the other one, because I started to go over the lines and I made a real mess. So, I'm just going to put my initials here. And I'm going to put 2022 there. And September here. And I'm going to call that one done. What do you think? I did say I was going to show you the um, envelope, so give me a tick. Let me go and get 
and get them. Hopefully I can find the, the example. Oh gosh, that one. See, I'm now faffing around, aren't I? Instead of being logical about things here. Ah, there it is. There we go. So, oh, now just taking the lid off there. So these are the um, glassine envelopes by the Exo and Quinn. And I found these on Amazon. I think there's 50. Yeah, it's 50 in here and they were about six, seven pounds. And this should be all dry now. And it will fit in here. Just like so. And they're see-through enough that you can see what's on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. And they've got a, a sticky lay, you know, sticky flap there, which I most probably won't use. Just tuck it inside. But how lovely is that? I think so. And if I just bring it out, you can see what it's like. So, so I've got something to put on the back, which I will do. So that's those. For the other ones, these are what came. They actually came and folded like this. And so to create the envelope, you have to take a little bit of card out there. These little bits of the heart stick upwards. You put them through here, bend them down, and it creates this lovely envelope, which is a lovely surface to decorate as well. And this is actually a card that I created to go with it because um, I was playing around yesterday. So this is with ink tents. This is one of the distress inked. I did this on the back. I'm not happy with it, but I've done it. And um, so that would be able to go into this. And uh, it fits with a little bit of wiggle room. And this morning while I was cutting things out, I realised that I could actually cut double size and create little cards that would fit in both of these. So I'd need six by 12 centimetres for these size and um, whichever way you want to fold it. So it would be, I think, 13 centimetres by 10 and a half folded in half. So you keep the 10 and a half. But um, yeah, so me and my little cards. So I'm going to say thank you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this and that it's given you some ideas. I'm so chuffed that I've discovered the value of the white ink tents. That has re I'm really impressed with that. I also like the way that the white souffle is so bright in these little bits at the bottom. I think that just lifts it all as well. So until I see you again, which may not be tomorrow, Thursday, the 22nd, because um, I've got a colouring template to do for the face for the Facebook group, the Angela Porter Colouring Book Fans Facebook group. Um, I may do that today, though. I'll see how I feel. It's quite nice out, though. Sort of like it. We've got clouds, but there's sunshine coming through, so I don't know. I shall see what I feel like. So, take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Oh, and don't forget, be creative. Until then, take care. Ta-ra. Bye. Hoyle.